Criticade! All right. Hi there. Welcome to the first episode of Criticast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, podcast time. The only podcast on the internet. Yep. I found <laughs> out <laughs> this week, because yep. this, this last week is the week that we went live. I found out that Robert thinks that joke is fucking it, hilarious. It's hilarious. I, <laughs> like, I, I I was like, yeah, he, that's a kind of funny joke. But then, like, you put it on our on our YouTube page and our Twitter and, like, tweeted it's, it. And it was like... I'm not against it, but I found out that you find it it's really the funny. the only joke I've ever made. <laughs> uh, anyway, this this is a, a, a podcast to talk about Sonic Adventure 2. Uh, where, the whole podcast, where, the, the process of the whole <laughs> series of podcasts is not going to be entirely about Sonic Adventure 2. Just no, no, this no. episode. This, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is just to kind of dissect what what we went through as as human beings. Yes. And I haven't I haven't rewatched uh, the last three episodes. Neither have I. Because it's like it's two ep- it's two hours for for me for editing it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so I haven't had the time. I've been sick for the last week. And yeah, I've been in Texas. Yeah. Uh, if you watch our or if you diligently watch our Alice in Wonderland series, you're gonna find out in about eight episodes when I start talking about how I'm going on <laughs> vacation. Going to, I'm gonna yeah. be away for th- three weeks. Yep. Uh, and I'm back. Yeah, this we're, is it. we're back. We're and trust from the me, future, guys, so. don't worry. I've learned to sit away from the mic this time. <laughs> I've listened to all the episodes. I was on my little iPad on vacation, and I yeah. and I I heard all the cracks, and I was like, oh, oh, fuck. It, to, to be fair, I turn us down uh, in in subsequent episodes. Yeah. So like, you'll hear an Alice, you sound better, and we oh, yeah, sound yeah, yeah, better yeah. too. So it's like even in even the dark side of Sonic, I sound yeah. better. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, and that had more to do with the. Um, the our pop screens we didn't have the like yes. i had one but you didn't so yes, when yes, i yes. <laughs> so you sound very very uh i don't know even how to describe it i'm not like a professional sound person or anything of course of so, course of course know. well okay so since this is the first episode before we get into sonic adventure 2 let's mm-hmm. let's talk a little bit about ourselves sure uh so jacob you start um okay i am 24 good good <laughs> it's good stuff my name is jacob it's a hot take i am bisexual and Just throwing all online. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Please give your age, it was, sex, and location. No, no, no. no. It was it was weird because uh, I like my parents don't know that I'm bisexual, so I, like, <laughs> and it's, I'm not hiding it from them. Yeah. But I would. I wouldn't. I don't want them to find out. Your dad you know follows I mean? our Twitter. Yeah, he does. But I like we, we haven't tweeted out. Jacob loves to suck cock. So, <laughs> so, uh, like I asked my parents not to watch the episodes for for a pretty obvious reason. Yeah, uh, fair, fair. <laughs> and, and that's that's. Uh, wait, did you leave in the bit where I kept making your mom jokes and then you got really mad at me and said, "Stop making your mom jokes"? No. I'm gonna cut these all out. No, I took them out. Ah, I took, them out. <laughs> I took out some stuff like because <laughs> because we kind of had to. Those early Fair. episodes, like we, I, I watch them now and like I'm getting all like mi- misty eyed. It was a month ago, but like <laughs> <laughs> I watch them now and I'm like, oh shit, we probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> we probably shouldn't do it. Bubsy was especially hard to watch. Again. Bubs- people liked Bubsy. <laughs> I know people Which loved Bubsy. I didn't like it at I d- all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I remember loving it. But yeah, uh, but I watched it back. I'm like, oh, this is a little awkward. I do like the joke where I talk about my black son to the police officer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that was fun. Okay, so continue about yourself. You're bisexual. You're 24. Uh, yeah. Um, I. I'm a computer. Well, I, I work currently uh, at my mom's business for IT and management, um, and so I want. I, I'm studying to be a computer scientist. I have some years in that, and I, I also went to college for um, computer game design. So I, I took a lot of game design courses and shit. So that's that's me. Okay, uh, I'm Robert. Uh, I love pussy. Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, vaginas are terrifying. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. You said on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. So, so my name is Robert. Mm. I am 19. I turn I turned 20 in in uh 15 days. Yeah. Or like more than that. But whatever. Who cares? Well, like when this episode comes out yeah. essentially. <laughs> uh it, when this episode comes out, I will no longer be a a little a little teen. Yeah. So, uh I am from the suburbs of Chicago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a I have a beautiful girlfriend who I who I care about greatly. Yeah. Uh, who who I she wants me to mention her on the show more, and I Aww. say no. Why? Because <laughs> Wait, why? Let's play fans are, are murderers. <laughs> what? 
Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was surprised at how many people are happy that we mentioned them on the show. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought that people were going to be like, don't fucking talk about us on your shitty ass show. Yeah, Olivia <laughs> loves it when we talk about her. I talked about watching yeah. Lorax porn with her and she seemed really <laughs> happy about that that I told that story. Yeah. I found that really weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I was, I, she was sarcastic about it. I thought she was serious. I thought she was seriously upset. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, you, that we you like, texted yeah, me. Yeah, like, is Olivia okay? <laughs> it's so funny. I, I mean, was like, yeah, she's fine. I didn't know. Um, I was fucking, I expected everyone to be angry. <laughs> uh, so to continue about me, yeah. uh, I am in college for acting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jacob and I, we met at community college. Yeah. And I know I mentioned in a previous episode that we never talk about how we met as a joke. I was kidding. Uh, we yeah. met in community college. Yeah. Uh, uh, we we were doing shows together, and mm-hmm. Jacob comes up to me like three months ago, and he's like, "Ah, oh, let's start a Let's Play channel." And yeah. I'm like, "I barely know you." That's not <laughs> we, we are good friends. We are good friends. No, I we hang. I, I did the Let's Play thing because I I just wanted to start a YouTube channel, and I thought that you and I doing a Let's Play was our I most mean, successful. I, like that was the best chance we'd have. I've always been passionate about YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah. Since. I mean, I was in elementary school. Um, really? I remember when I was younger, I forget how I found YouTube, but I, it was through Angry Video Game Nerd. <laughs> I was on nice. Cinemassacre.com, nice. and it linked me to YouTube, Ooh. and that's how I found the website. And I, and I went through the rabbit hole of Shane Dawson, Ray William Johnson. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, dude. I didn't. I like, really? It was only, really popular. Yeah, but when I was young, the only YouTuber I followed was Philip DeFranco. I've never seen and a video of his. Yeah, he's, he's good. He seems nice. Oh, he, he, he <laughs> really is. Yeah. He, he, he supports a lot of uh, lesser YouTube channels. Oh, good. Like, Maybe like he'll he, like he stands up. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, he'll stand up for the little guy a lot. Good. He's an good, awesome good. dude. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, I, I'm a big fan. My, my favorite YouTube channels uh, are Super Mega. Yeah. Uh, is my favorite YouTube channel. Yeah. Used to be Game Grumps. Uh, I still love Game Grumps. To death. I watch them every day. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, Oni plays. Uh, Jacob. Jacob is iffy on them. Uh yeah, sort of. I mean, I I like <laughs> I like Oni. The thing is that you don't like Ding Dong and Julian. No, I, I like them fine. It's just th- their style of humor. I I feel like in Game Grumps, the reason I didn't watch early Grumps a yeah. lot because I found like I used to watch early Grumps, and then I hated the fact that all their episodes devolved to John and Aaron going. Rah! For like fifteen minutes. That's fair, and that's kind of what Oni is. Well, they, they, like, they, like, I think they've toned that down. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure they. I'm sure they do mm-hmm. because they get a lot of Grumps fans. <laughs> that's true. Now, that's, so true, like, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, but like when when Dan started Grumps, I eventually. I I for some reason I didn't I I started watching I, I've been watching Eager after uh, uh, Aaron, who is who is one of my favorite people in it since two thousand six. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I started watching him right when his first cartoons came up on Newgrounds. Mm-hmm. I love Newgrounds culture. That yeah. is, uh, oh, I, that I is a, a, a passionate love of mine. I miss <laughs> Newgrounds to death. Yeah, um, I still think about clock, like the clock. The clock. I, I, <laughs> I'm like, what a weird fucking culture that was. Yeah, it, it was strange. And, yeah. and uh, everyone who watches Let's Plays on YouTube doesn't know what Newgrounds is. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. because you're too young. Uh, and if you do know what Newgrounds is, please like. <laughs> Comment and subscribe uh, uh, if you if you like Newgrounds type humor because that's that's kind of what that's kind of what we it's kind of what we bit? that's what I do because uh, yeah. that's where my sense of humor came from is sure. from Newgrounds yeah yeah um, so uh, yeah oh man I just had a major flashback What's up? back to Tank Man. Uh, yeah, fucking loved. I used to quote that shit all the time. I don't even remember. I, c- I couldn't quote quotes, it now, yeah. but I loved it. I still quote some Newgrounds animations <laughs> pretty frequently, actually. Yeah. I, I quote a lot of Aaron stuff because he was he was my second favorite animator on Newgrounds. Who was your favorite? I mean, he was he was huge. Uh, I think I've said this before. Um, oh shit! What's his name? He did the blockhead stuff and the the red shirt guy, whatever that's was called. Was it the the Swain? Yes, the Swain. That's yeah. it. He, he was my favorite. He did an episode of did. the official podcast with um oh, did with he? Uh, Critical recently. I haven't kept up with him oh. since since Newgrounds. But, but yeah, he kind of disappeared. He has game design now. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I mean, he used to play some of his games that yeah. he played. And they were they were good, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Should we talk more about ourselves? <laughs> no, I, I think that's good. Th- that's okay. our origins. Like if, if yeah, uh, jumping into Sonic and having us say we're getting a rip grind di- <laughs> rip Brian Griffin tattoo is too sudden for you. That's our origins. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> uh, we're relatively normal people. 
Really? Yeah. I don't, I, I'm not normal. I'll, I'll go and say that. Uh, well, you're pretty normal. You're more normal than I am. I don't know about that. What, what's what's less normal about you than me? Uh, I, There's a lot that's <laughs> <laughs> not normal about me. Uh, I dress like a trash monster to work, even though I'm a manager. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah, you're a manager. You could do that. I guess I show up in pajama pants, and like the 16 year old girls who work for me, I think have to think that it's crazy that I get paid more than they do. <laughs> oh but I do God. a lot of work and shit. So <laughs> yeah, true. You're always like, working. <laughs> I am always yeah. working. Unfortunately, I don't take sick days either. That's why oh, wow, this last yeah. week was so rough. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, so, but th- let's let's talk about Sonic. Yeah, Sonic right. Adventure Two. Uh, yes. Sonic Adventure 2 is a game by Sega. Yeah. It came out, in, it's by Sonic Team specifically, mm-hmm. came out in 2001 yeah. for the Sega Dreamcast. When I looked that up, I was so surprised. It came out, like, not that long before Halo, like the original Halo. Yeah, like, like a few months. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know, Halo's such a good game. It's, it's the generational <laughs> leap that is not actually a generational leap. Yeah. Uh, which I, uh, it's, it's crazy, because I, I feel like... Sonic Adventure 2 is the perfect bridge between 90s gaming and 2000s gaming. It, it really it, is. It, it's the last game of its, it's kind, really, yeah. I'd say. Which is, because, like, and, and another game, uh, Smash Bros. Like, I always think mm-hmm. of Su- Sonic Adventure 2 as being uh, GameCube, but no, yeah. it came out on the Dreamcast well, in 2001. It only came out on the Dreamcast a year before it came out. I know, but, like, that's still, I, I think of the Dreamcast as something that was ancient and failed horribly. That's right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and it was. It yeah. was. It was a big failure, but like. Not ancient, though. No, not no, ancient. Not but like, I, I still think of it as, as more ancient than the GameCube. And yeah. not really. No. Not really at all. Uh, I don't know. So it's uh, that time frame is, is just really weird. So Sonic Adventure 2 is the sequel to Sonic Adventure 1, obviously. Yes. Uh, Sonic Adventure 1 was the first delve into it, first real delve into 3D, into 3D. For, for Sonic the Hedgehog. There was a small mini game in uh, some Sonic uh, collection for Sega Saturn. They had well, they had the oh yeah, but they had, they, they had, also had the, the Sonic 3D, which was on the oh Genesis. Sonic 3D Blast sucks. Yeah. That that is nothing to do with that. this. <laughs> and and I remember liking it, but again, I was a kid. So and their first real try was a game called uh, Sonic Extreme, which was a canceled game for the Saturn. Um, oh, okay. And that game looks like garbage. Look it up. It's there's good reason why it's canceled. <laughs> sure. So Sonic Adventure One is what I would say a great game for the time. I I don't know if I I would even go that far, because um, I don't know. There, there's a lot that there there are games that come before it and at the same time that are way better. Oh and, yeah. And so like, but there are also games that came out around the same time that feel completely like garbage that were that's marketed true. as fantastic games back then, well, like, like yeah. Tomb Raider. <laughs> Th- yeah, 3D games especially have, have a hard time in that time period because yes. no one knew what the fuck to do with them. <laughs> so th- th- yeah, it, it, uh, Sonic Adventure was basically Sega's counter to Mario 64, right? which is, which is one just... of... One of my favorite games of all time. It, yeah. It's shown its age, but I love it still. It has shown its age. Um, it's 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 Super Mario compared to Sonic is so cleverly designed and shit. Yes. Have you uh, do you watch Matthew Matosis at all? No. Uh, he does a great video on on Super Mario sixty four and like it's it's funny because we. We both watched Game Grumps and they they dissect that game and Aaron fucking of course, of course. destroys it. <laughs> cause he's I actually a hate haven't monster. watched the, the Game Grumps playthrough of Sonic Adventure. Oh really? Yeah. Oh no 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 not Sonic Adventure. Uh, Super Mario sixty four. Oh yes about. yes 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 yes. Yeah. Aaron tears it apart. <laughs> yeah. But for not really good reasons. Not a lot for of not time. good reasons. A lot of the time it's because he fucking sucks yeah. at it. Yeah. That's why. I, like when I watched Matthew Matosis, he he does a great play by play of why mm-hmm. the game is amazing and well designed and it, everything. It feels great to control Mario. He, it he, does. When you jump, it feels great. When you yeah. when you do a double jump, it feels like all your momentum is traveling. Yep. Triple jumping feels like a climax. Yeah. Uh, when you do the little little crouch jump and you jump forward real far, <laughs> it's the best. Best yeah. feeling in the world. There's even things like that, that he points out that I didn't even realize. Like, it's just intuitive to you. But, like, there are certain jumps that you can get, like, 1.5 times the height of a triple jump. Mm-hmm. Just, like, the sideways jump, you can get sort of the same height, but not really... Uh, but it's easier. Yes. So if you're a worse player, you can do that instead of doing the triple jump, mm-hmm. which is like the perfect, like they put so much thought into how the player would move. Yes. And, and there's about what a million to ways do. to move Mario around. Yeah. And it, it feels fantastic. Yes. Compared to Sonic. <laughs> the si- uh, okay. So <laughs> you push him up and sometimes you jump and that's yeah. about it. Well, that's the extent of the controls. When, when translating Sonic to 3d, 
they added a very important factor, which was the homing attack. Mm-hmm. So when Sonic is in the air, you give you give the A button a little tap, and he flies forward into the nearest en- or wherever you're aiming, yeah, but generally the nearest enemy, and Sonic gets a little bounce from it. Yeah, I think this is a fantastic mechanic. Do you? Yes, I think it was necessary. To I bring Sonic. I don't think it. I don't. I think it takes away what the original bounce attack was from Sonic. Oh, from like course. original 2D Sonic. Yes, and, and like that's why I don't think it's a great translation. Like I think that. It, <laughs> Instead of being the way that you survive, you, you kept your momentum going forward by barreling through enemies by going into a jump yeah. form. It, it makes it its own separate attack that takes you either sometimes away from your forward rom- momentum and takes you off screen and does you, does weird things with your movement. I, I don't think it feels as good. But think about Mario sixty four when you're fighting enemies. Yeah, does it feel great? No. Yeah. Well, when you jump on great. enemies. It it, it it can be a little sloppy and imprecise to land on enemies in 3D space. Uh, okay, well, yeah. we're going to pause it then. Hey, okay, sorry, we had a technical <laughs> issue. Uh, I was talking about, oh, yeah, when, when you're jumping on enemies in Mario 64, it yeah. doesn't feel particularly amazing. It's where a lot of the frustration of the game comes from. It's precise landing. So adding the homing attack to Sonic Adventure 2 to the 3D platforming formula mm. of a way to really get into enemies, I think was a was a brilliant choice well that's a good argument uh i i don't think yeah i think aiming was was hard in in super mario 64 but i don't think that i don't think that it was as big of as big of an issue because the emphasis wasn't put so much yes i think making the homing attack for sonic adventure and sonic adventure 2 obviously is, (laughs) is what put more emphasis on killing the enemies and it's just not fun Whereas Super Mario doesn't care as much about that, and yes, so you don't okay. need to bounce on enemies. I guess so. So, like, I guess it's a trade-off. It, it depends. Because mm-hmm. Sonic does something differently for the for the 3D platforming uh, scene, which is 3D open linear levels. So when, when I say open, I don't mean, like, you could explore all around. Like, right. in Mario 64, <laughs> you could explore the entire level, and they're, they're well-crafted around that specifically. Uh, but in, in, say, Crash Bandicoot, which is... Uh, another thing that, that uh, Sonic Adventure was competing with, mm-hmm. uh, when you were heading forward in 3D platforming, you could not go, you could not like move the camera around and explore, explore right. left and right. right. You had to go straight. Yeah. And there was no camera control. Right. Sonic Adventure added, it mixed it, them both. It, yeah. The linear gameplay with set pieces. Which I don't, is, I don't think that that works as well. I mean, like, uh, for an example, just because I was playing it recently, Kingdom Hearts, and it's mm-hmm. ungod, I remembered it's, I've been playing the final mix and I remembered as a kid being ungodly frustrated with turning the, the fucking camera around. Yeah. They wanted it to be a linear game, but they also wanted you to explore the environment. And I yeah. think that trying to mix those two can sometimes have horrendous results unless you're really, really focused. Okay. And I think that's, that that's one of the shortcomings of Sonic Adventure is that it wanted you to kind of explore the area, but then sometimes the camera would lock you forward mm-hmm. because it's a game about moving forward. Yes. And so I, I think that that was one of the shortcomings and, and part of where the frustration comes from for players, especially when they're in Sonic Adventure 1, it's really bad where there'll be moments like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Where the fuck am I supposed to go? Yeah. Like Big the Cat levels. Of course. Especially. Well, I wouldn't say any of that comes into factor when playing as Sonic. The thing about yeah. the thing that changed that, that, that set Sonic Adventure apart from other games was there were uh, seven different characters to play as? I think seven. Um, in- put, including put the Super correct Sonic? number up on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in, in having multiple ways to play, what I believe Sega was doing, or Sonic Team was doing, was trying to break up monotony of 3D gameplay because they know that heading straight in a linear path constantly as the uh, one character would get boring Yeah. because... It's it's a little harder to design levels in 3D, and they weren't used to it yet. Yeah. So they added different characters, which I think was mostly a good idea in Sonic Adventure One. Yes, I, I actually I agree with you that that's part of, I think part of the saving grace of Sonic Adventure One is is the interesting concept of exploring the same level with different characters. Absolutely, and, and, I, and I mentioned and this in the playthrough. Yeah, actually. yeah. <laughs> um, and it's it's a lot of it's a lot of fun to like go to a place and solve a puzzle differently or, or explore an area differently yeah. and, and everything. Um, but I, I think that it, it suffers in a lot of its core mechanics. And I don't think mm-hmm. that 
I don't know. I, I think that the overall design is well intentioned and and good, but sloppy. Like like it's most aged. most it's aged, but that's not my main issue with it. Mm-hmm. My main issue with Sonic, primarily like overall as a series, is that it's a good concept that they never know how to quite implement. That makes sense. So <laughs> and another thing I really want to want to peg on on uh, Sonic Adventure One because this will come yeah. up later. Sure is. When you were between levels, mm-hmm. you had an op- somewhat open world to explore uh, that you unlocked a little yeah, bit more of. to an extent. Yes, of course. It's not yeah. like a full open it's, world. Yeah. But you had, you had several large hub areas yeah. to explore um, to get to the next levels and solve puzzles in between levels. Mm-hmm. And sometimes this was frustrating. Sometimes it, it felt good. Uh, yeah. I really like running across uh, Station Square. I like running across the areas. I do, too. Um but then there, then there's maps like the the forest, and mm-hmm. I hate that. It feels, it just feels bad. Uh, yes, I agree. But yeah, <laughs> and like you have to like explore it uh, to some extent to finish all of the characters, and that's that's kind of a drawback uh, to to the formula that they had, where different characters explored the same areas. Yes. Where it's like if you hated an area, you knew you had to do it like five more times. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> but even then, you do create a pretty good internal map That's of true. the area, yeah. and it's and it's a very memorable layout for for the world. Yeah, I I have it in, ingrained in my brain. Uh, most of it, uh, yeah, I I know most of it by heart. Uh, I I sometimes confuse it with Sonic Adventure Two for oh, whatever yeah. reason, but, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but one thing I, I also want to say, I, I, to the praise of Sonic Adventure 1, sure. is it's very memorable. Uh, a lot of the level designs are pretty good. Uh, the first level, fantastic level. You, you have to say that. The, the first Sonic, yeah, as Sonic. It's yeah, yeah, that's level. what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as other characters, you know, it, it depends it, which yeah. character. <laughs> but when I say that, I mean, it, it felt first. really good to run through as Sonic. It's the first level you're allowed to play in the game because yeah. you can't select your character unless you have to yeah. select Sonic at the beginning. Right. So you run through this level, and it feels great. You feel like Sonic. You feel like it's a direct translation from what, what it was in 2D right to 3D. And it, it feels fantastic. It's a well-designed level, and you feel like you go really, really fast without really that much obstacle. So it just feels good to go fast. Right, but that's that's... That right there is another one of my main criticisms of Sonic. Mm -hmm. The best that you feel is when you are doing nothing. When you get to watch Sonic whip by because there's no obstacles in your path, and that means that you're not doing anything. I don't agree. I think being able to go around the obstacles in a way that gives you the best time is the best experience in a Sonic game you can have. Exactly, but that's like when you play Sonic 1 and you're you're whipping forward and then there's obstacles and you jump over them, you bounce on them, you dodge spikes, you you go around things, you find different paths. But in Sonic Adventure especially and uh and in Sonic 2 even the 2D one like yeah. You just whip by and there's nothing in your way and then they slow the game down to to give you obstacles of so course. that it's easier. That does make sense. Yes. And that's that's my I There mean, are other levels in the game that I think are pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I think Twinkle Park is a super solid level with a lot of different ways to play it. Sure. Uh, I hate depending. This... Again, <laughs> again, it, it depending, all really depends on yeah, your on the character. Um, but yeah. So let's talk about and Sonic Two. B- before we <laughs> before we talk about the things that Sonic Adventure Two did wrong. Yeah. I want us both to give a couple of things that we do like about the design of Sonic Adventure Two. Is, okay. Is, in comparison, as well to Sonic Adventure One. Okay. Um, I think that Sonic Adventure Two. Was a, uh, I don't know, how do I say this? It was a little bit more, I think I like the, the characterization of the characters a little bit more. I think, okay. and again, this is something that I don't feel is important to games at all. Yeah. But, but yeah, I think that Sonic feels more like a character than he does in Sonic Adventure. Shadow is a, is a, has a terrible character design, but is a good character at, at his core. And uh. <laughs> I, I think I think edgy hero like edgy counterpart to the main hero is always a solid bet. Like like yeah, v- I guess so. Vegeta like Sasuke <laughs> Sasuke uh, fucking fucking Riku again because I've been yeah, blasting yeah, yeah, King yeah. Hearts. <laughs> like the, the edgy <laughs> counterpart is always just a solid character to have. Yeah. Uh, and then I think Tails becomes a little bit a little bit better because we get to see more of what was awesome about him in Sonic Adventure 1, which okay. is like the tech part. Well, we didn't talk about the story in Sonic Adventure 1, did we? No. Uh, I'd say it's <laughs> it is a 
very grandiose, sweeping story told yeah. through the worst voice acting you'll, you'll ever oh, fucking hear in your entire goddamn life. so life. bad. Like, I remember when they switched voice actors <laughs> to Sonic, I was like, bring Ryan Drummond back. He was the best Sonic. And then I really played no, through no, Sonic no, Adventure no, no. 1 and 2 again. Yeah, no. Oh, God, he sounds like <laughs> shit. All the characters sound like garbage. They do. It's so um, funny. <laughs> Uh, except, uh, except I, I like Eggman. I like his voice. He's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but Go ahead. Sonic oh. Adventure One had a very grand story. It did. That I think was well executed. I th- I think the story was well executed. Uh, that that's one of the, I think that's one of the saving graces of the adventure titles is their story. And I think that Sonic Adventure Two is way worse. Yeah. But it's it's still like one of the best parts of that game. I agree. So, uh, go ahead and compliment Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah, so Sonic Adventure 2, I don't agree with you that it gives the characters better characterization. I personally okay. liked it more in Sonic Adventure 1, but sure. I, uh, that's really down to that, that's, personal preference. Yeah. Um, what I do like about Sonic Adventure 2 is... Uh, it's hard to think of that. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's, it's more that I'm on the spot right yeah, now yeah, is the yeah. issue. And, and I really did this to myself. It's a big deal. <laughs> but, I mean, we're going we're gonna to cut out the, the moments where we're not talking anyway as you do in in a podcast you edit out the awkward silences so yeah dude we haven't had any awkward silences. exactly but <laughs> so i'm gonna take a second to think sure but it's not gonna sound like i'm gonna take a second the music of sonic adventure 2 is fantastic that's that's, that's something true. i have to say to it but that's that's also true of sonic adventure 1 that's not an yeah. improvement yeah uh, i, know. I <laughs> I like how soundtrack. we picked things. I l- we picked things that aren't really like substantive to Sonic Adventure. 2. Yeah, to the gameplay. Like, the story's pretty neat, and the music's all right. Of course, <laughs> and then oh. the gameplay is like garbage. The Chow Garden. We did not oh, delve into the Chow yeah, Garden in our they playthrough. They improved the Chow Garden immensely, and it's so much fun. So let's talk about the Chow Garden. We, uh, we, we didn't. We didn't do it in our we playthrough. Didn't play we didn't it. talk about it. So, so to the people at home, yeah, the, the little twelve-year-olds and my girlfriend who are watching <laughs> this who don't know about the Chow Garden. In yeah. Sonic Adventure 1, they had a feature uh, where you could find little secret rooms, mm. and in it, you'd find a little egg. Yeah. And inside the egg would be this cute little chow creature. Throw up a chow on the screen. Yeah. Um, and you'd they- raise it. You'd give it fruit to give it its good stats. Yeah. And then you'd, you'd, you'd go over and you give it <laughs> items that you collected during gameplay. Yeah. They're central to the plot of Sonic Adventure 1. Yes. They, are, they don't appear at all in Sonic Adventure 2 except for the gardens. Yes. Um, they're... I think that's the best part of that game. They they improve like, like it was it was more like a mini game in Sonic Adventure One, and yeah. then they they brought it more to the forefront in, yes. in two. And it's just, yeah, it's the saving grace of that game. Yes, like I, well, well, the thing about the the, the chows of which I I was going to mention, and yeah. then you rudely interrupted me. I was just giving context. <laughs> Go <kidding>. ahead. Uh, <laughs> When when you gave it better stats, you then put it into little races. Yeah, where you can see your little chow race yeah. against the other cute little chows, and you get, you give it a little support, and and, then, and it <laughs> usually loses in Sonic yeah. Adventure One because it's really really annoying, boring, yeah. and hard to do in the first one for no reason. Yeah, yeah, um, it, it's for just a bad time. Reason. Yeah, uh, and then they they include like if you if you have no idea what what we're talking about in, in our playthrough, you'll see us pick up the little tubes and the little animals Yes, and you can give that shit to your chow and it'll, it'll give, it'll up its stats. And then like the animals will give it animal parts. Yeah. They'll give <laughs> a little animal face yeah, or whatever. So like it's if cute. you give him a gorilla, he'll get gorilla arms or shit and it's, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, but so, that's the only fun part of that game. So <laughs> yeah. Well, we're talking about Sonic Adventure two. Yeah. In two. Uh, yeah. In, in Sonic Adventure two, uh, a lot of things they also added. They also added the ability to mate the chows. They yeah. added the ability that once you, uh, you, you love the chow enough as a as a certain type of character, a yeah. hero or a villain, it can either turn into a good or an evil chow. And then if or, you continue to level it after that, yeah. depending on which character it sees the most, it uh, turns into a special chow that has like little little Sonic yeah. quills. Yeah, a uh, big part of the chow stuff is reincarnation and shit yes. and and stuff, and so it's cool. There's also a fucked up way to do that, though. What? If, if you're the villain and, like, you abuse the Chow, you can turn it into a hero that way. Really? Yeah, like, if it fucking hates you as a dark character, you'll be a hero. And if you, like, fucking beat it as a hero, it'll be a villain. That's really funny, actually. <laughs> it's really funny and fucked up, and I love it. <laughs> but that's, that's like, the best game the Sonic Adventure 2 gameplay yeah. gets. And, and they, added, they added Chow fighting. Yeah. Uh, yes. So now you can level up your power stat and I have your child little yeah, yeah. have your child fight other chows. <laughs> yeah. They added a lot more depth to chow racing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they oh, added yeah. a chow kindergarten. Yeah, where you could send your chow to learn special skills that it's, would then 
it's all real cute and it's fun. It's so cute, and, and that's that's all it's supposed to be. It's just be a cute little diversion that ends up being what what, what millennials like about Sonic Adventure yeah. too. Because if you talk to anyone are around our age, yeah, about, about Sonic Adventure two, and most people will say. If, if you talk to most people our age and you say, what's your favorite video game? A lot of them will be like, Sonic Adventure 2. I don't... I, a lot of people who don't play video games our okay, age okay. very often... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, non-gamers. Um, like, like, people who grew up with sure. video games but then stopped around their teenage years. Yeah, you talk like to normal them, people. Yeah, like normal people. <laughs> Unlike us. Yeah. You you talk to them, they say their favorite game is Sonic Adventure 2, and you're like, why? Sure. And they say the Chows the are Chows great. Are fu- the Chows are fucking awesome. I mean, that's why we didn't play the Chows. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it's not even that... That's it's, not why we did the Chows. It's because it's, it's, it's saps not all the, fun to the, watch. Yeah, the forward motion of the game is yes. all just playing the story. And Jacob and I, I, by watching our episodes, I know that we're a lot better when we're watching mm-hmm. games that are very fast-paced and there's a lot of shit happening to talk about. Really? Would, you, would, you, would you agree? You think? I, I, I don't know. I, kind of. There, there's some moments where, like, when we get stuck in Alice that I really like, actually. Where really? We're just we're talking about fetishes or dicks or whatever, <laughs> and then, like, it slows down and we're not making progress, but it's fine because we're, we're focused conversation. on the conversation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. But like, I, you're right. When we're, when we're doing fast paced stuff, like the, the conversation moves forward mm. faster. I'd say our, our best episodes to like introduce people to the series are yeah. easily the ones where we're, we're doing a lot of fast motion. Cause that's sure. Definitely the easiest ones to, to hook on to, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now that we've talked about the two good things in Sonic Adventure, or the three good things <laughs> three in Sonic Adventure things. 2, yeah. uh, we're going to talk about the game itself. Yeah, and what it got to move on to the bad. Why did it, st- it step back so far it did. from Sonic Adventure 1? It, it, it keeps really did. the multi-character system, but it doesn't let you choose each character. So right. each In the first game, each character had their own individual personalized story with, mm-hmm. a, with its own little thing. Yeah. Like uh, Gamma story was all about being human and being good even though you're a robot. Well, yeah, well, well, struggling with the fact that he is a, a an animal. Built like, for evil. Built, yeah, built by Robotnik and everything. And yeah. So it's... And, that's and then Sonic is, like, being the hero. Tails is yeah. living up to Sonic's expectation. Like, they each have their own little arc. Yes. Even Big has the arc of finding his fucking frog. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know, it's cool. Yeah. And then instead of that, in Sonic Adventure 2, they lumped three characters together for hero and dark yes and it it really doesn't make sense it, it, it is very retractive yeah like if sonic adventure 2 had come out first and then sonic adventure 1 came out later yeah i, would, I think, would not be able to tell the difference right i would I'd be like oh what a great sequel yeah yeah um, yeah because there's no there's no reference to it because it's like it's like a quarter of an inch forward and eight steps back yeah. right oh yeah there, there's well, I can't. I, I even can't think of anything other than the Chow stuff that was an improvement. No, I don't think yeah. that any of the controls. Like, uh, I think spin dashing felt better in in Sonic Adventure Two. Yeah, you said. Uh, that. I, well, I think. I, I well, I think spin dashing itself was more fun. But I th- I think more specifically the things that come out of sp- uh, spin dashing, such as like like uh, light dashes to get the rings and, right. and stuff like oh, that, feels yeah, better yeah, in Sonic yeah. Adventure Two. Yeah. Whereas in Sonic Adventure One, you had to wait it's, a it's, period yeah. unless you got a certain item, and it was yeah. annoying and yeah, dumb. Yeah, that that is dumb. But um, then I don't know. There's stuff like in Sonic Adventure One, they don't, they never do the thing that I hate in Sonic Adventure Two, where it's a backwards camera, so you're watching Sonic. Sonic's front and then mm-hmm. the truck behind him. I can him. think of one very specific moment where it does that in Sonic Adventure 1 when you're running really? down a building. Uh, oh, But it's like that's it's like right. for three seconds. And you know what? If you just do it once in the game, if you do it it's once, fine. Yeah. If, if you do a little set piece just to look good, you're allowed that. They do it a, I think they do it more in Sonic Adventure 2. They do it too. in Sonic Adventure 2 like five times. Yeah. It is. It's, it's, it's too rough. much. It's um, really rough. And, um. <laughs> and they do the thing where, where you run through levels as, the, as different characters. But the thing is, you only run through certain levels, and they di- they call them different things, but they are right. clearly the same levels. They, they're very much the same levels. But the thing that makes it less good than Sonic Adventure One is when you're doing that, you are playing as the same type of character. Yeah, because there's three types of yeah. characters the in Sonic Adventure Two. The mechanics are too. not different. Exactly. Yeah. Except, except some characters have different items yeah, which makes them feel slightly. worse than the other yeah. ones <laughs> so there's clearly a character that's better from each one like right. tails is clearly better than eggman yes um 
um, Sonic's clearly better than Shadow, and Knuckles is clearly better than Rouge. Yeah, I think the heroes are just better. Just, <laughs> they just play better. They, they do. It feels almost as if the dark side characters are an afterthought. So <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> so you're playing as, as the same type of character in yeah. the same type of level. So it, it, what was cool about Sonic Adventure 1 is that each character controlled differently in some way yeah they all felt really different but when they're running around the same stages you got to experience the same stages but with different kinds of yeah. gameplay which made it feel varied you, interesting and cool you solved the same problems in different ways yes and it, it made everything feel like a unique experience that like an adventure that you were going on and, and using the tools that you had available to you to conquer a problem yes as opposed to uh a, a certain situation that would appear the same way every time for multiple characters and that only that character could solve. Yes. So <laughs> it's just, it's frustrating really. And, and, and to, to co-op the issue of not having an open world, which gives some level of just running around and having fun. Yeah. They introduced a ranking system into Sonic Adventure 2, which I feel like is yeah really, I know a lot of people like it, I feel like really? it's the down. Yeah, oh, I feel wow. like it's the total downfall of the entire series. It's, yeah. because it adds replay value, but the ranking system is so fiercely tough, and you have to go through just the most roundabout ways of doing everything perfectly and trying mm-hmm. to finagle around the controls <laughs> yeah. that it just feels bad. Yeah, and when you when you do something that isn't your fault, and most of the things that, that are issues with you in the gameplay, it's not, it's your, not your fault. fault. Yeah. You get an E-ranking, and it makes you feel like shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, you feel bad. Right. And especially, I, this especially comes up with the Knuckles and Rouge levels. Yes. When the the placement of some of the, the whatever you're collecting can make it insanely easy or incredibly hard. Yeah, for no... For no reason yeah. and through no fault of your own. And so when you go back and you're trying to get that, you ha- you have to basically just roll the dice every time. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's so frustrating. Like I learned later in the in the in the Knuckles gameplay uh, when when I was playing, yeah. that sometimes it was better to just die, yeah. and continue to play the game, <laughs> exactly. and, and, and just retry and get, roll for a better right. gem placement. Uh, I which mean, wasn't an issue in Sonic Adventure One because no. they were in the same place every time. Yes. Which I mean, it it's less replayable, but it's more but fun. Who can, yeah, exactly. I mean when. I don't replay puzzle games often, mm-hmm. but you know what? They're fun the first time. And so <laughs> a big issue with the Knuckles levels in Sonic Adventure 2, which is why they're better in Sonic Adventure 1, mm. is that they're more labyrinthian. Yes. Which is bad for yes. gem hunting and for specific objects hidden in specific randomized locations <laughs> if they're big yeah. and have a lot of branching pathways and buttons that you well, have to push to open up certain things that you've already gone past. Right. It, 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 would, be diff- it would be a different story. I think that they could do... I think that they could do randomized gem placements uh, for Knuckles level if we did the same level every time. Like if it was like a Haunted Mansion style thing where the gems appeared in random rooms and you got to know the man- like the layout of the labyrinth yeah. really well. Okay. And then they randomize the placement so that it's different every time, but you know where everything is. So like if you get a clue like by the piano, you know exactly where that is and you're like, oh shit, it's over there. I think that could be fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but because they they give you these wide open and even that, that I don't random, think that would be that fun. It wouldn't be that fun, but it would be an improvement. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to make suggestions on how like oh, the how game they could have be improved. improved the game. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. Of course. Uh, but yeah, th- that's absolutely. It's so fr- it's maddeningly frustrating so, to be like the uh, the optimum strategy is I should kill myself. Yes, <laughs> which is never the strategy that's, you want. That's you failed at game design if that's what, what yes. happens. Unless you're doing a subversive kind of game. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But Sonic Adventure it's Two not. is a very straightforward <laughs> game for children. Yeah. Um, and so so we talked about the Knuckles levels at length. Let's talk about Sonic Sonic, Sonic stuff. What's Sonic what's stuff? different with Sonic. I mean, I guess I, I covered the main points with like the gem da- the, yeah. the coin dashing felt or ring dashing felt better. The it did. Certain items feel better. Uh, they added the grind mechanic, which I think feels good. Uh, uh, it, I think it's I think it's bad just just from a a repetitive standpoint mm-hmm. because there's no difference between grinding and running. It's still just you moving forward. Yeah. 
and impeded by enemies yeah. occasionally. And, and it, it, it's an inclusion to the Sonic franchise that they definitely improved in later games. I'd yes. Say. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ring levels. They play with it uh, because because when you when you jump off rings or er, er, uh, uh, um, rails in yeah. Sonic Adventure <laughs> One. You, there was a big issue where you just jumped straight up and lost all your momentum from the rail, and it right. felt super jarring. Yeah. Uh, later games allow you to dash from rail to rail really, really fast, right. which felt good. Yeah, and they, they do other things. Uh, Sonic 06 gets a lot of hate, but actually rails in that game... When they work. Uh, they, they, they work, and they... they there's a lot that you can do with them. You can go, you can hop side to side. You can go up. There's different secret branching paths and everything. Yeah. And the difference, the main difference there is that rails are used as the I'm moving forward but not doing anything, and the running around portions are just you fighting enemies. Yes. And, and I think that's a good distinction to make. Sonic 06 is still a bad game. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Uh, but then, uh, what? What about what? How, We've we've talked about it in the show a little bit about Tails and Eggman. Yes. <laughs> the thing that made okay, so in in Sonic Adventure One, you had the levels where you played as E one hundred two Gamma. Yeah, uh, which was who's he, I look forward to playing him every time oh, I yeah. play Sonic Adventure One. They were 1. fun. Yeah, uh, the lock on felt really fast and yeah. really really nice. It's like so whenever, good. <laughs> whenever you whenever you you lock on to something, it's immediate. It's yeah. so good. And turning felt great. Yes. Uh, you, it was just you know you were just controlling you, a character. Right. You could control on a dime, and like they they. Like they made it so that he has wheels on his back legs and he turns like around, so it looked real cool too when like you turned around, like like real you, quick. Yeah. yeah, you could mechanically turn around, but then it still looked good in the model. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an accomplishment, really. But in Sonic Adventure <laughs> Two, the big issue is they put Tails and Eggman into mechs. Yeah, which <laughs> for no like for maddening reasons, Tails yeah. is his own fucking character. A yeah, and like they. They clearly said we just want to play Eggman and like we need a counterpart for him. Well, we can put Tails in his fucking plane. <laughs> yeah, but the thing about Tails is that he's more fun to control in general yeah. than most than any character in the Sonic yes. franchise by himself. Yes, because he can he, he can, can run fast and he can he do can little flying. Fly and and his flying feels really good because you it's easy to time when he's gonna fall because he because he's not and, the best flyer. That's yeah. that's a trait of his. Yes, uh, and so. It, it, it feels good to play his tails, I, especially in Sonic Adventure 1. Those would, are my favorite levels. Yes, I would argue that his level, like his speed levels where he's running fast are better than Sonic's levels. Mm -hmm. Because you have the extra axis. That too. But I think I think like just from a from an XY perspective, they're, they're better because you have to earn that speed. Sonic goes immediately fast and you can just turn on a dime and run yeah. around enemies and shit. With Tails, you have to consider how the, the time it takes for you to earn. Like, he, he does his little tailspin thing, mm -hmm. and that's how he gets his speed. And so you, you have a moment where you're slow, and if you get stopped by enemies, you suddenly have to think, well, now I have to earn my speed back somehow. Yeah. And I think that that's more interesting than Sonic yes. overall. So and they removed that in Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> of course. And they just put him in, in a they mech. put him in a mech. Uh, and what feels different about the mech than, uh, than Gamma yeah. is... Bulkier, slower. It, it feels bulkier. Turning, turning, turning the bad. mech is weird. Yeah, because the the the, t the head of the mech <laughs> moves before Turn, anything else. Right. So you move, then you're like the neck of the thing moves, mm -hmm. and then your and feet then, move like like two seconds later. Yes, and it feels really it feels bad. Really bad. And there are large swaths of time where you are just like they put you on a track. You cannot move, and you're supposed to be getting combos, but you can't. You can see something, but you can't target it because your target only goes on one level. Yeah, and and it feels, it feels and even when it's so on, on going on the straight level, it, sometimes it just doesn't lock on. Yeah, <laughs> and it just it doesn't for no reason feel good to you lock on. You can lock on, on through walls and shit. Like mm -hmm. it's just and the whole mechanic to getting points is trying to get the maximum score so you get the best ranking. Right. So the whole thing about it is they just throw a million enemies at you <laughs> so you can get the best things, but then you're but struggling with the controls you get hit you lose the combo yeah you feel terrible you you're moving so slowly yes. and then you get an e-ranking and you feel like shit <laughs> <laughs> not to mention uh for whatever reason they felt that they needed a different health mechanic yeah. than the other characters <laughs> yeah so for knuckles sonic shadow rouge they all have the same health mechanic rouge. you get rouge yeah i always <laughs> and then you get hit you lose rings 
if you have at least one ring, you're fine. But more rings is more security. You know, the s- classic fucking Sonic health. Of course, of course. In, for those two mech levels, you have a health bar. And you get health back by collecting rings. And your health drains so fast. So fast. And when you collect a ring, you get... <laughs> you get one point towards extra health. Mm-hmm. And you need, like, ten rings to get us, like, a little... S- Whatever of health would, would, would you say? Do you think that the the health meter is a hundred rings? Do you think? Would you say? Maybe. I, um, the, the, because when you get I never one, counted it, it feels like you get one <laughs> percent of your yeah, health. Yeah, it, it does. And each hit you take takes thirty percent of your a health. A lot of health. Yeah. So it's 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 a bad time. Mm-hmm. And they they really downgraded whatever gamma was in Sonic Adventure One, mm-hmm. which is sad because to, to a point grabbing mini game. Yeah, it just feels essentially yeah. That, that's overly hard, very frustrating. Very controls frustrating. poorly. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's uh, just an it's just an ugly experience. Yeah, <laughs> and, and jumping feels r- real bad too. That's another thing. That yes. I, like, oh yeah, jumping in jumping the mech on, feels on really the mech is bad. Real hard. And, and uh, the, gliding feels cool. Gliding feels cool, but it's the only way that you can control yourself. Basically, and which then is why you have to play several <laughs> levels until you get until that. Until you get it. And, like, that's why most people, like, I, I watched you and me, and, like, the the reason we glide everywhere is because it feels way better than trying to jump to places. Mm-hmm. And you turn a lot easier when you're gliding as well. Yes, exactly. So it's... It's, it's an overall better system. <sighs> it's an overall better system. In, yeah. in Sonic Adventure... In, in Sonic in Adventure one. 1 is a yeah. much better system than Sonic better, Adventure 2. Everything just feels better. Everything is better, <laughs> including the music. I'd say honestly. Really? Yeah, I think I don't like "Living There." I think it's a boring song. Okay, I, uh, I like it a lot. <laughs> uh, I think "Open Your Heart" uh, from Sonic Adventure One, the main theme, is a fucking banger. It is. That song's great. <laughs> that, that's a good song too. Mm, yeah, it's so butt rocky and it's great. I mean, yeah. Sonic Adventure Two has "City Escape," which is a great song. Yes, that is uh, great I one. honestly like the Knuckles raps. <laughs> a lot. I think they're cheesy and fun. <laughs> I I think they're I think they're funny. I I don't know. I wouldn't listen to them in my spare time. Oh no no Whereas no! Like, if if like City Escape came on the radio for whatever fucking reason, oh you like, turn it oh, way up. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> that would be that'd be so fun. Uh, but yeah, that's that's mm. kind of incidental. That... Sonic level music sounds better in Sonic Adventure One. I'm just gonna put that out there. Sure. Actually, you know what? No. I, I changed my mind, actually. Really? Sonic Adventure 2 is better music. I'm, I'm going to say that. I don't think so. Um, thinking back, because I'm thinking about certain areas, like the Mystic Ruins hub area sounds like shit. Oh, that's the, true. Uh, oh, yeah, I A lot of the, the main level areas are unmemorable. Yeah. Um, one of the songs in the game that's that's a better song is just ripped directly from a different game, Nights into Dreams. Yeah, uh, that's true. For a terrible level um, <laughs> in Sonic Adventure 1. Oh, man. There, uh, there's stuff I forget about Sonic every once in a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I try and delete as many Sonic memories from like my head. Like the 15-minute <laughs> casino level where you have to yes. play the most boring pinball uh, games of all time yeah, for a while on yeah. Sonic Adventure 1. It's boring. It's, it's, it sucks. And it's you have to so do it a bad. ton. Yeah, uh, you, you have, have to do, do it, it I think you do it as two characters. You do it as Sonic and Tails. Yeah, I think that's right. It sucks. It's boring. It's, it's so boring. Um, I mean, that's... So that's one thing that Sonic Adventure 2 does better. Uh, but even then... It still tried to vary up the gameplay in Sonic Adventure 1, which is admirable, because mm-hmm. in Sonic Adventure 2, you literally just do the same thing every level. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there, there's a difference, though, between varying gameplay and adding a minigame like, smack dab in the middle of your of game. Of course, I'm not saying it's do. good. <laughs> I'm saying it's admirable. I, I, think it's, I think it's brave. That's yes. probably my, my that word makes for sense. it. I agree. It's brave, but it, it, it ultimately doesn't work. Yeah, I agree. Um. But yeah, that's that's. I think that's all my criticisms of Sonic Adventure Two. I, I had more fun playing it, just us hanging out. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was way more fun. Bosses suck. B- bosses suck a lot. Bosses are terrible, and and Sonic Adventure uh, One, you basically fight one or two different. You buy you you fight, uh, fight chaos. Few. You fight. You fight the different. Chaos has different forms, and yeah. you fight them. You fight different ones in different exactly. characters. It's the same character, but it's it's it's, it's like. In Sonic Adventure 2, you fight a bunch of nameless things. That's, yeah, In Sonic Adventure 1, you fight things that are critical to the story. You fight the main enemies, Eggman and Chaos. And and Chaos is constantly evolving over the game. And seeing him grow as he gets as he gets more of the Chaos Emeralds, which is it's the driving which force is, of the plot, yeah. it, it, it notifies cool. you how dire and serious things are getting for yeah. Sonic and, and the other friends. In Sonic Adventure 2, you fight a nameless guy in a, in a drone twice. You fight him twice. Th- three times. Three times? You fight him once as Rogue, too. <laughs> Rouge. 
Wait, too. you don't fight him. Oh, yeah, you, you fight, fight him, him as, 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 as Sonic, Sonic and, and Shadow. Shadow. Yep. Wow, I forgot about that. I know. <laughs> they fucking reuse um, everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and then two times you fight uh, Eggman and Tails as the respective characters. Right. Uh, which well, you fight you fight everyone. You yeah. fight your counterpart in every mm-hmm. every. But level. it's the same thing. It's it's they're <laughs> it's, not. It's you. You're fighting you. <laughs> yeah, you don't have. In, they don't have interesting design. Yeah, they just do kind of the same things you could do, but yeah, worse. Exactly. Which so it's not fun. It's not fun. And and uh, trying to homing attack Shadow, and then he does a little bounce, and oh, then you bounce off of him. Feels God, really bad. So frustrating. It's frustrating. It's annoying, especially in Final Rush. Yeah. Uh, or not Final Rush, you or know, the, 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 the final, last, like, yeah. the last boss is Sonic. Right. Bad, 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 bad. Yeah. I think the Vile Lizard, is the, the the ultimate life form Vile uh, Lizard that you fight as Shadow, interesting. is a is probably the best boss fight in the game. It's Because it ties into what happens with Sonic Adventure 1 a little bit. A little bit. Because it's about, you are face... <coughs> Jeez. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow. You fight... Robert died. Yeah. <laughs> you fight, like, the big bad of the game yeah and you and it shows you how bad things are getting it's the tension and then you just fight it again a second time immediately later in a part that controls like shit (laughs) my argument to that would be is that we we never really heard about like no it didn't build up the whole game yeah shadow was referred to multiple times as the ultimate life form and then we was like no it's this giant fucking lizard and like one they don't look anything alike yeah two I don't know this fucking lizard. He's like, exactly, but it feels <laughs> slightly a bit more like what Sonic Adventure One was trying to do. That's but true. Again, with Sonic he's Adventure at One, least unique. At the end of the game, when you fight the complete perfect chaos, yeah, it feels oh, uh, for for lack of a better word, so cool. it feels epic. <laughs> it feels like you've reached the end of like an epic story, yeah, and you're facing it at your top and his top, right. and you are fighting just a beast yeah. that you've been building up to the whole game. For all its faults. I, I mean, for all its faults, the, the story element of, of how cool it feels mm-hmm. is just awesome. Also, the final boss, so- Super Sonic, in, in Sonic Adventure 1, feels really fun to play. Uh, uh, it, collecting the rings and, and ha- being able to run on the water feels sick as fuck. Being uh, able to run on the water, yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I still... I still don't think that it's it's good gameplay. Uh, like it, it's it's like it's, it. it's essentially just dodging and collecting rings and then swirling up him. Like it's the, it's definitely not interesting or, or complicated like or or diverse. I don't know. It's just it's it's kind of black. It like it's not bad. It's just, it just not great. It, as, it feels, I guess as a gameplay, <laughs> it feels it, it probably it feels a lot better because of the mounting story and yes. the music and open yeah. your hearts playing. Open your hearts playing. Oh. You're fucking golden you're and fucking you're fighting, golden, the, fighting biggest, the big bad guy. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. it built up the whole game, dude. It feels fucking right. sick. And but then it, in Sonic Adventure 2, you're fighting this lizard that you've never seen before. You're fighting a lizard you've never seen. And you're seen. flying in space and, and it, it, it controls For no awful. Reason. Yeah. <laughs> and, and sometimes when you hit the target on it, which is like this big gross little yeah. pus thing that makes no sense. Like, why does it have it and why does it grow it? <laughs> in different places all the time. They never explain Who it. Who fucking knows? Because um, it makes sense that you attack Chaos's brain. Yeah, obviously. It's his fucking brain. But you don't. It's just fucking little pus bubbles on Sonic Adventure. In Sonic Adventure 2. And it just. And sometimes you hit the pus bubble and then you just bounce back like you didn't hit it. Like yeah. you just hit the side of it. Yeah. And it feels like you've done something wrong, <laughs> but you. Didn't. Yeah, like it's your fault mm-hmm. that, that you fucked up and didn't hit it. I don't know. It's just. It just. It feels bad. <sighs> it is bad. It's, it's a bad game. Ultimately, yeah, it's a bad game. It's ultimately it, it's it's so many steps mm. back for the Sonic franchise. Yeah, uh, and it is the most well received game in the series by most people by by the common public. Most people talk about Sonic Adventure two like it's the best fucking game in the universe. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with with the feel because there is something to the fact that the the characters like the world feels a little bit more cohesive and the characters i think feel more intertwined and connected whereas like in sonic adventure one you cross paths every once in a while but most of the time everyone's off doing their own fucking thing i like that i i i I, I do too i prefer that uh also but i think that sonic adventure 2 is just a little bit more clear cut and i think that that speaks more to people who i don't know who who like who like the story elements more of Sonic than they like the gameplay yes, elements. I guess so. But again, as we've spoken about, the story of 
Uh, the story of one is way better. Easily. Yeah. Um, and and it, it creates a less satisfying Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah. Is the big issue. Uh, also, Ken Penders wrote a 20-page <laughs> uh, adaptation for the comic. Yeah. Uh, that was not set in the comic book universe. Really? It was like, like it was, it was like, but basically he just introduced a bunch of characters that have no fucking purpose <laughs> except – it does take place in the comic universe. I don't know why I said that. Yeah. Um, he just introduces a bunch of characters that's like, yeah, this is the, the squad that's going to capture the Vigilante Sonic. <laughs> and it's like like they introduce all these characters and they introduce like fucking four kidney characters that are like, ah, oh, Shadow's a bad guy. Uh, and then the, for the next couple <laughs> issues, they're just like, oh, where's Sonic been? And he's just like, ah, oh, he was fighting the evil Shadow. Because clearly, clearly Ken Penders didn't play the game. Right, doesn't understand. Uh, he keeps saying what happened was uh, people in Station Square sent Sonic to go fight the evil monster Shadow. <laughs> that's clearly not wow, what happened that's in the not game. What, that's not what anything happened. It, it was it's so Wow, that's, that's impressive, actually. It's impressive. And that's, like, that's like someone was like, maybe you should watch... Like, someone just play the game or, like, have someone, like, tell you briefly what the plot's like. And he's like, fuck no. I'm just going to make my own story. It's exactly what he does. <laughs> it's so dumb. I mean, that's 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 kind of funny. It's, yeah. <laughs> also, update on, on uh, Ken, Ken Penders. Penders. I, I, read, I read a bunch of Archie Sonic when I was on vacation. Yeah. Uh, Knuckles turns bright green uh, oh, for, I, like, yeah, 30 issues. Yeah. For no reason. Super funny. <laughs> and Oof. he... Uh, for Sonic 100, okay, basically, after Knuckles the Echidna gets canceled, mm-hmm. uh, the comic series, yeah. he starts putting in more Knuckles back issue stories at the end of the issue. Okay. But slowly and slowly, they start getting longer and longer and longer until the Sonic <laughs> segments are like four pages, and then the Knuckles <laughs> segments are 30 pages, uh, including wow. the worst the worst offender, the double-length issue, Sonic 100, is a 10-page Sonic story and a 40-page Knuckles story. Wow. Yeah, it's insulting, especially because it, it came out... The exact day of Sonic's 10th anniversary. <laughs> because clearly Jeez. it shows that Ken Penders did not give a fuck about wow. Sonic the Hedgehog. That means that Sonic got Wolverined in his own fucking comic. Yep, exactly. <laughs> By someone That's who ridiculous. isn't as interesting as Wolverine and no one cared about wow. like they cared about Sonic. Uh, so we're about reaching the one hour mark. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, obviously we're going to cut down a couple we're, bits. We'll cut down a little bit. But so... Uh, this is gonna probably be about fifty minutes long. Good enough length yeah. for, for first episode. I think episode. that's a good yeah. So for first thank podcast. you for uh, joining us on the first episode of Criticast. Yeah. Uh, feel free to yell at us about our opinions of Son- Sonic yeah. Adventure Two, or openly discuss or, or with Sonic. Us, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll talk in the comments. With we'll you respond about stuff you 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 agree we, or disagree. We with. have tens of viewers, so we'll we'll talk no, we to don't. you about it. We, we yeah, have we like do. we get like three viewers per episode, <laughs> Jacob. No, we don't. We get at least at least six. On the first day, but you you judge you but you judge also videos forget, by the first week. You also forget that I watch every video. So I do one, t- well, I've stopped. I've stopped to stop bumping up the video views. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that's the only way I watch it. You have the raws. I yeah. I watch when I edit it. I watch so. it when it when you upload it, but it's privatized. Right. So I I whenever you upload a bunch of new critic oh. content, I just binge it. <laughs> <laughs> it feels it, awesome. I like watching critic it. Well, fun. that's not it's not going to happen this week cuz uh, I was sick, I didn't know. Oh, yeah, so it'll be next week. Yeah. But. So either way, thank you for joining us. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh Jacob's computer's we'll, we'll fucked. So the reason so, why we have so many one-offs coming out is cuz we couldn't play Alice and we well, couldn't play yeah, others. Yeah. That's why Alice is going to take a break for a little yeah. bit. So Sorry for the discontinuous Alice. <laughs> yep. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I look forward for your uh, arguments. Bye. Bye.